And welcome everyone to a March Madness NCAA Digital Offseason Chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by new Villanova head coach, Cal Neptune, back on the main line after a stint as the Fordham head coach. Uh, Kyle, this came as a shock to all of us uh, that follow the game. In fact, I didn't realize I was probably the last one to do a sit-down interview with Jay at the Final Four. Mm. Um, how shocked were you that he decided to retire even maybe before you got the phone call? Um, you know, I'd probably even more shocked uh, than you even were. Um, you know, Coach has talked about retiring before. So when he actually did it, I was as shocked as anyone. So help me out with the timeline here. He, because he obviously kept it very secret. It was a tight circle of Jay, his wife, Patty, AD, his wife, I think president. Um, when did you learn that he was retiring? And then when did you get the phone call offering you the job? So, um, you know, I, I hadn't really talked to coach throughout the year besides good luck, congrats, et cetera. Um, but I, I, I kept in contact with Mark Jackson, our athletic director, just because he's had, has been a great friend and mentor um, just for me in my career. So I, I would hear little things here and there. Um, but again, like I'm thinking, OK, coach has said this before. This is not going to happen. So truly, um, I didn't think it was going to happen until maybe the day before when they asked me to come down for an uh, interview and then. You know, I'm thinking, OK, fine, that there's be some sort of process. And then it just happened right after my interview. A couple hours later, um, you know, I got the call um, that I got in the job. So it was a, a really quick process. Um, I don't know that, you know, it's, it's still almost surreal. Why are you a good fit? No, I think I'm a good fit um, just because I've been here. Um, you know, the last, you know, 10 of the last 14 years of my life, I've, I've, I've been here. Um, first as a video coordinator, um, and and then as a head coach, as an assistant coach. So, you know, I think I know the program. You know, the staff is all people I've worked with before. Um, you know, helped recruit a, a lot of the players here. I've been around uh, most of them for most of their careers. Um, the former players, and you know, everywhere, everyone on campus I know pretty well as uh, know pretty well as well. So, um, for for me, this is home. Um, you know, and I think this is all big one family, uh, a big family. So, you know, I'm just excited to get started. So those that know basketball know Fordham's a very hard job, yeah. especially in the 8-10. Yeah. And you guys uh, finished ahead of George Mason and Rhode Island, 8-10, and 16-16 and 16 overall. I mean, in the world of Fordham basketball, like that's a good year. And people maybe don't know that from the outside. I know it because I've seen it for 30 years. Um, during your time there, what did you learn most about yourself as a head coach that now you can translate to legitimately a step up? Yeah. So I think that, uh, you know, now being through it, you don't know this as an assistant coach, but you just grow so much as a head coach. I think it's, I, I say you grow in dog years, um, you know, and just having a lot of different experiences that you just don't get to have as an assistant coach. So getting those things out, just, you know, hiring in a brand new staff, bringing in a bunch of new players, learning a, a new culture and system of uh, how people like to do things at Fordham was great for me. Um, you know, and kind of being out of the Villanova armor for a year um, was, was great. And, I, and I, you know, building those relationships with our players and coaches and administration was amazing. Um, you know, I, I really don't think I'd be ready for this job uh, if I didn't go through that. And so it was, it was an amazing run. I think we, you know, especially the players buying into everything we asked them to do um, in a short amount of time. You know, I, I can't say enough good things about that place. And I'll tell you, Kyle, it's almost unheard of that everyone kept their job. Um, you know, it really is remarkable in today's climate that Fordham and Villanova not necessarily work together, but in a weird way, yes, that, that everyone kept their job. How, how critical was that for you because it was a short stay there that you didn't put people out of work? Now, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, I was, I was like half, like, you know, for the first couple of days there, um, you know, I was thrilled for me and, you know, obviously for me, this is my dream job. Um, but there was a, 
you know, another side that was really nervous for uh, Keith Ergo as the as the new head coach over there and, and the staff that we all hired, we hired to be there. So, you know, I really w was worried about those guys being displaced. So I'm, I'm ecstatic that, um, you know, it worked out on both sides. All right, so let's get to the roster. We're in turbulent times at the portal. Uh, yeah. Help me out some updates on the health of Justin Moore, Caleb Daniels, and, and the overall roster. Yeah, um, you know, Justin is, uh, I think he's in a, in a good spot, as good as he can be um, right now. Um, he's just going to, I think we'll know a lot more uh, as we get through the next couple weeks and months here um, you know, about you know, just his status for next season. Um, I, I think that he's going to have a, a decision to make, you know, whether he, you know, sit out the entire year or come back at some point out. And I don't think we're going to know that for a while. So, um, you know, Tim, Caleb Daniels is, is, is back and fully committed um, to, to Villanova. And he's, I think he's going to be a huge piece to what we do here, um, along with Brandon Slater, Eric Dixon. Um, you know, those guys are going to have to step up. And, you know, I think we're, we're all excited to see how they handle this new role. Anyone else on the roster moving, staying uh, at this early May stage? Um, you know, I, I think everyone else is is, is back fully uh, committed. Brandon, uh, uh, Brian Antoine put his name into the transfer portal recently. Um, you know, we're, we're going to support him through this time. And, um, you know, whatever he decides, we're, we're going to be behind him 100%. Hey, the schedule, certainly the last couple of years, because Jay had and Villanova had a Final Four caliber team, um, but overall, Villanova's always played a good schedule, regardless. But uh, what's your mindset on what you want to do with, with the non-conference schedule? And maybe help me out in terms of what is already committed for next fall. I mean, we, we, we play the big five here in Philadelphia. So that, you know, those are four games that are just locked in every year. And I, I think it's a great thing uh, for, for us. Uh, most importantly, but also for our, for the city of Philadelphia. So those, those things don't, don't really change. And then, you know, we have a uh, big 12 and uh, big 10 deals that, you know, we're, we're kind of locked into. So, you know, most of the schedule things don't change. It's a kind of year in year out thing. Um, and we've kind of got used to doing that here and don't know. So normally we're, we're looking for one, maybe two games a year. Um, and so that those, those things kind of run, it's the schedule kind of runs itself every year. What about a tournament? Um, we're, we're still, um, we're still um, kind of locking into that. Um, I know we got the Phil Knight Invitational um, that we're committed to. Um, yeah, and I, I got to get locked in to, to, to other things that we're committed to as well. But um, again, the, the schedule pretty much runs itself besides uh, Phil Knight. Let's see, Phil Knight, the, the Big Five, um, Big 12, Big 10, you know, where we're kind of locked in. Hey, last two things on that. And I appreciate your time, Kyle. Um, one is one thing that Villanova had done right, lately was. There had been some games, you know, like the Syracuse, um, you know, the former teams that were in the Big East. Now that UConn's back in, uh, I don't know how necessary that is. Is I don't know if there's any chatter of, of rekindling any of that stuff. Yeah, we're we're always we're always uh, in the mindset that we we would play those type of games if they if the opportunity presented itself. I actually went to that Syracuse game at the Garden. It was unbelievable like the, the just the atmosphere in there atmosphere in there was it was awesome so you know I, I love being part of those games so if we can play games like that um that bring back those old uh big east rivalries uh, uh that would definitely be a, a good time for us and last thing kyle um i know jay wants to find that balance of being around but not hovering you know sort of you don't want to be the helicopter parent um yeah. what role do you want him uh, it, you know, to play in your life as the head coach succeeding him? You know what? I, I, we want him around as much as possible. Um, you know, and we don't, we don't worry about him being a helicopter. We, we kind of welcome it. Um, you know, he's a, I mean, again, he's, uh, you know, besides my parents, uh, probably the biggest influence in my life, especially professionally. Um, I know the rest of the staff feels the same way. And then our players truly love him, right? So, so we, we want him to be around as much as possible. Um, you know, so I, I'm sure he'll take some time off here, but I'm looking forward to, for him to, you know, being as many practices and games as he possibly can be at. Well, Kyle, I appreciate it. Uh, thrilled for you, your family. This is obviously a dream come true, uh, staying within the family at Villanova. Look forward to a lot of these kind of conversations. Appreciate it, Kyle.
Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.